Um, we're going to have Mariana Bandarra, as a transmedia artist from Brazil, Porto Alegre. Hi. Uh, oh, that was too loud, sorry. <laughs> well, uh, that has been really exciting. Uh, I'm so happy to be here. I'm really kind of nervous about this. Like, so thank you so much, Jaji and Jorge, and everybody who has been involved in this. I am kind of so excited uh, that I almost forgot what I was going to say. So thankfully I have this thing. Um, well, I am um, I'm Mariana Bandaha, like uh, he said. And in 2006, I discovered hula hooping for adults. And it was sort of a spiritual awakening for me. And it was in a way what um, made me uh, eventually become uh, interested in, in performing arts and in arts in general. Like, because the thing about hula hoop, uh, other than the fact that it really, it's a really powerful tool for connecting your mind and your body, uh, is that it's not a hula hoop. It's like, it's just a circle, but it becomes a hula hoop when a person is at the center. And I really like this. Uh, I find that really inspiring as an idea that you would have something that is defined by the void. So uh, you need a gap there, a void. It is defined by the fact that it, there is something there which does not exist. So uh, I started becoming more and more interested in the types of metaphors that that entailed. And from, since 2006, I have been making this happen in various places in various cities and I got really engaged in empowering other people to do it in their cities and really occupy and change uh, the landscape of the city. Uh, well, so uh, as I've become uh, more and more interested in the social implications of this um, and the fact that it can create amazing community and connection like when you put people at the center of something and really, like, if the same per if two different people do the same thing uh, to a hula hoop, the outcome is wildly different just because the two people are different. I think that is uh, an interesting provocation for uh, us here in general, people who are cultural uh, content producers, cultural agents uh, in various positions. So I thought I'd start there because as content producers, we tend to view audiences as this void that needs to be filled so that they are uh, empty and the things that we make, the art, the cultural offer, the, the programming of our space, that is what is going to fill that void. And of course we mean well, like we are not assholes. We care for people, we want them to have good things. But I think there is a bit of a problem with the fact that we are using a model uh, in which people are emptiness. And so, sorry. <laughs> um, I think uh, what, I, what I mean to say is that this, con uh, this model of looking at uh, audiences as empty has been proven insufficient. And an example of that, which I find uh, very relevant, and it comes from Brazil, is Tecnobrega which has been a really a cultural phenomenon, like a revolutionary cultural phenomenon from uh, many uh, perspectives. Uh, I will advise you strongly to read on it because I don't have enough time to go into it. But what, it, what Tecnobrega is, is this thing that happened in Belém do Pará as a musical genre. It's a, like a mix between um, EDM, like electronic dance music, and embrega, which is really romantic, uh, super saccharine uh, romantic music. It's possibly the only genre of electronic music that you can dance to cheek to cheek. Uh, and these people were really in the periphery. Of course, this is um, something that has to do with high and low culture, and it has to do with what the mainstream media accepts as being worthy of being called culture. But the fact is, they, they based their, their economic system, like their market, on parties, 
and local acts, so people were really close to the, to the superstars that they were uh, making. And they became a multi-million uh, dollar industry. And today, like, two of the most popular artists in, Brazil, in Brazil's recent, recent history have, have arrived from this. But when this happened, the media was uh, deliberately ignoring it. And um, it's not that they didn't know, like it wasn't a big secret. The influence of Brega is something that uh, was really important and influential in, in the state of Pará and in Brazil as a whole, in the peripheries, has never been a secret. It's just that people discounted it because they thought it was like vulgar and hmm, that is not up to our standards. And okay, I'm almost done. And I think that, is, um, that has to do with the fact that the people who propose content have been uh, traditionally very comfortable in the roles of content makers. So it's like the cultural agents are floating above the city, high above in a blimp, and then they drop their products to fill the void. And I'm just gonna rush through this, but anyway, it's a good image and it's one that uh, I think these things, like Technobrega and like zombies, they poke holes in this structure and then the blimp is coming down. It, so, like, we need to get out of the blimp because it's going to crash land. And it used to be so nice. Yeah, like, no, nobody could, fit, like, the foul odor couldn't be felt. But anyway, uh, and I think this is a good parallel with the, um, the rise of uh, zombie survival experiences in the UK and in the world at large, because in a way uh, it is about empowering uh, people to make their own superstars, to maybe become their own superstars, and especially to have a unique uh, thing that is about um, who they are at that point, at that circumstance. So. The way I see the best way to get out of the blimp is to create things that treat audience as content and not as void, as emptiness. And perhaps to look for the voids in our work and allow people's fullness to be a part of it. Thank you. Thank you, Mariana.